Welcome to Sippin' Tea with V. It's your girl V Brown. And guess what, y'all? I'm back. I know, I know, I know. I flaked on Empire last week. Listen, I had my notes down pat. Everything was ready to go. I just was tired, y'all. No lie, I was tired. But we off that. It's a new week. You know, Love and Hip Hop came on Sunday. I didn't do it Sunday. It came on last night, and I didn't do it last night. But I did take notes, and I'm ready for them, okay? First of all, y'all, alert, alert, new mix alert, new mix alert. Okay, so y'all already know what drink I got. My crown royal apple, right? I got my crown, got my crown. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I don't want to think, I don't want people to, who watch my videos and my reviews and my recaps to think that, you know, I'm some type of alcoholic because I'm not. I just like to have me, you know, a little tea. Just a little tea. <laughs> All right, so y'all, what I am sipping on that with is some Cran Apple. Now, y'all know I love my Sprites. Me and my Sprite, that's my thing. That's what I like to do. But, you know, I'm trying to try something different. And it's actually a very good, different taste. Um, besides the just the regular Crown and Sprite that I do or the Crown, Cranberry, and Sprite that I do. So, it's, it's kind of different. Let me just get my little taste on y'all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know if y'all can see them. Mm-hmm. Good shit, good shit. Alright, so now let's go ahead and get into this motherfucking episode, okay? Let's see. So Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, season five, episode six. Mother of all problems. Alright? And all the mamas on this motherfucker got a problem. You heard I me? Mean? So, this episode starts off back at Jocelyn's church video release party. Jocelyn, disrespectful ass, talking to Mimi like, I thought I was your girlfriend. Girl, no you didn't. Um, you only saying that dumb shit because you see Mimi happy with the female. And Chris, where is your backbone? To nip, you need to nip all this in the bud. Like, all that, eh, he, 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 a kind, 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 honey, it's cute and all. But it ain't cute and all. So, Chris, you need to... I don't know where your backbone at, boo. You want to be so masculine and so manly, but I guess you lack that. <laughs> Moving along. Jocelyn, you know damn well you're holding something over Carly's head. We don't know yet what it is, but you do. So, you need to go ahead and tell us. Because, you know, I just want that little tea. <laughs> I just want some tea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's it, and that's all for me. Just a little tea boom. Now, Mimi, you know damn well that you didn't invite Jocelyn to your housewarming because no one else would have came. If Jocelyn would have been there, no one else would have showed up. Not Tammy, not Rashida, not Jessica Dime, not Carly Red. I mean, I think Arian would have showed up, but nobody else would have showed up, child. Messy ass. None of these women want to stand in their truth on this show nobody wants to stand in their truth y'all ain't no damn real friends i'll never be friends with a bitch that got on drugs and decided to physically attack me from behind y'all remember on um the reunion when mimi was walking down them damn stairs and jocelyn ran up behind that ass and went to tagging her ass y'all remember that shit and stevie J was right there and that's your motherfucking baby mama how dare you stevie scrap and sad show up to the party child Stevie called Chris beautiful, and Chris said, I was really going for handsome. Oh, you were. <laughs> you definitely missed the mark on that. Uh, Stevie didn't give a damn. He said, beautiful, y'all a beautiful couple. I want to be a part of it all. Pause. Chris, now you said that Stevie J was scaring you. I'm still trying to figure out what type of man are you. Are you a sensitive man, a sweet man? Because you talking about Stevie J scaring you. Girl. And did y'all see Stevie J blowing them kisses at Chris? Look, tea time. Let me find out. Stevie J done played around with Chris and Mimi. You know, I'm saying something, but I ain't really saying something. Okay. Jocelyn running all around um, blackmailing people. TT need a spanking, a little sit down time, a little time out time. 
inserts Tommy. Scrap gotta go over there with his little man bun. Y'all seen Scrappy? Uh, I mean, Scrap with his little man bun on top of his head, child. He gotta go over there. So Jocelyn told this man straight up, whether it's facts or not, I'm going to put a bug in Tommy's ear. Because the street said it. Now, when she told his ass that back in the day, 15 years ago to be exact, his mama and Stevie J would, uh, had dealios. And Scrap was like, uh, what is that? And Jocelyn was like, you know, Dilios, they were into, they had intimate relations. Man, that shit was so motherfucking funny. Scrap was like, come on, don't even do that, girl, up in, up here in this, in this party. Crazy is what crazy does, though. Tommy and Jocelyn are cool because they're both crazy as hell. Um, they might be on them same damn drugs too. I mean, you heard it from me, but you ain't heard it from me. Damn, um, so Don stepped through, like, that last Love & Hip Hop Atlanta check cleared, boo. It went to the, straight to the bank, baby. How, the T is, she's a stunt queen. She does credit card fraud, bank fraud, check fraud. If it's fraud, she does it, and she good at it, from what I hear, on the streets. But, you know, that's just T, I just report it. I ain't Jocelyn. I ain't got to be running around talking about these rumors of facts or not. Honey, it's tea. It's rumors. It's gags. And that's what I give all day, every day. Okay? Um. So, where we at? Um, Tommy is mad just at the presence of Dawn. She automatically is like, fuck that bitch. I fuck that bitch up. Talking about KK uh, and back in the day. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. The fuck? Hold on. You didn't even know KK back in the day. KK damn near 60 years old. You talking about KK and Don back in the day. Don damn near 50. So, uh, Tommy, you what, 32, 31, whatever? Girl, sit down. Sit down somewhere. This is what happens when people try to take on other people's beefs. Don was paying her ass dust at first. Okay? Don tried to play Tommy ass dust. Tommy was escorted out peacefully at first again, but then some kind of way she made her way back in the party like, yeah, yeah, that's all cool and whatever, but bitch, do you know me? I was like, wait, who is she talking to? She hasn't even made it to Don's presence yet. She ain't even in Don's face yet, so who the fuck is she talking to? She walked up to Mimi and Jocelyn like, I love y'all, but excuse me, uh, do you know me? With her finger pointing, Don is like, "No, I don't know who you are." And um, with those shades, Don had her shades pushed way down to the edge of her nose, like how Miss Doubtfire, Doubtfire used to wear her, uh, glasses, or like your grandma, or anybody, any old person you know, or somebody that can't see how they push it way down to the end, and then they look down in their glasses like, "Child, that's how Don had her shades, child, pushed down um, to the tip of her nose." Tommy kept on. Um, Kept on. OG Don came out then. Like, don't put your motherfucking finger in my face. So they both put their drinks down. And Stevie doesn't even want Don's right ass there either. He like, shit, if she got to get popped a couple times, you know, it's security, let her, let time go ahead and pop her ass a couple times. Because I don't want her ass here either. Tammy and Bambi go on a double date. Tammy's like, girl, let me hook, let me hook you up with Walker's best friend, Chaz. They keep the bobo. Um, don't be around here comparing folks to Jesus and the Virgin Mary. Stop it, please. Uh, Bambi will never be the Virgin Mary. And Chaz, honey, you will never be Jesus, okay? I don't even know what that was comparison was about because his dreads didn't look nothing like he could be any type of Jesus. And we all know Bambi ain't no type of Virgin Mary. But you know, you ain't heard that from me. I'm just sipping tea, okay? Mm-hmm. And let me just tell y'all, I do like my Sprite and um, Crown Royal Apple mix better than I do the Crown Royal Apple with the Apple Cranberry Welch's juice. and uh, I mean, Ocean Spring juice, sorry. But let me tell y'all why. Because I feel like the Crown Royal Apple with the um, Apple and Cran uh, juice, I feel like it's too sweet. With the Sprite, it kind of like breaks that sweet up and it's smooth. It just flows together. 
Both are good though. You know, yeah, you still gonna get your little feeling on, you know, with either one. So so Bambi said the only reason she didn't put them paws on Erica Scrappy's baby mama, y'all know Erica. She's not on the show, but Erica Dixon, um, who is Scrappy's baby mama, is because she likes their daughter. Bitch, bye. You didn't put hands on Erica because you didn't want to put hands on her. Don't try to bring her motherfucking name up or bring her up in a conversation when you know she ain't on the show to get in, get off in that ass. Because we all know, regardless of what, Erica got a mouth on her and she about her business. Okay? So, uh, chill out. Chill out, bam, bam. Chill out. <laughs> and then you want to say, oh, um... She still wanted a piece of Scrappy Boo and Scrappy still wanted a piece for her, honey. They got a kid together, been on and off for umpteen many years. Done lived together. She done helped him when he was down six. Done helped him when he was broke. Get it together. Okay. So, Scrap and Sass meet with Stevie J to go over some issues regarding Jocelyn and all of her claims. Mainly the one about their mother. They say something has to be done. Now, Stevie agrees. He says Jocelyn is out of control. She out of line. Now, I love me some Rashida, y'all. I already know this. That's like her style, her grace, you know, her makeup always popping, her hair always on point. You know, I just love me some Rashida. But what I don't like is her damn storylines. Like, most of them be tied as hell. We know this shit ain't really happening. We know this ain't what's really going on. Like, Stop it. But as a person, you know, I fuck with Rashida. Now, when Rashida's mom said Kelsey act like she Nicki Minaj or something after that little showcase, I was like, girl, you got a long way to go, boo -boo, before you become a Nicki Minaj, honey. Rashida wasn't even a Nicki Minaj, honey. I'm just saying, but you know I'm saying. <laughs> now, Rashida wants her mom and Scrappy's mom, Mama D, to have a conversation, a little sit down, you know, a little powwow, whatever. Child, you can't talk to crazy. Let it go and let God. That's all I can say. Let go and let God. Before I move on, y'all, make sure y'all go add me on Snapchat. I am her V or, uh, yeah, I am her V or I am underscore V. Either one. I am her V or I am underscore V. Make sure y'all add me, add me, add me, child. I'm trying to get used to the whole Snapchat thing. If anybody want to give me a whole little rundown tutorial on how it work and, you know, what I should do and how I could be more entertaining. Um, I know I want to start doing, like, my live reactions on Snapchat. But I want to see, like, what else can I do? Because I'm just so used to, you know, I work Monday through Friday. So when I'm on my break, I'm in my car listening to music. You know, after work, I'm coming home listening to music. So I'm vibing, I'm vibing on Snapchat. So whatever whatever is on my um, Sirius XM, you know, so I'm vibing. So, you know, let me know whatever the case is and make sure y'all add me. I am her V or I am underscore V. Boom. Uh, let's see where we at. So then we go to the scene that makes me want to just throw up, even speaking about it. Mama D and Ernest in the bed, licking nipples, rubbing nipples, kissing, and rolling around. I'm like, what the entire, entire fuck? She flicking and rubbing on his male nipples like, that shit ain't sexy. That ain't no turn on. First of all, mama, did we know you missing the teeth? So I don't want to see you flicking and lipping and popping and all that. Oh, no damn earnest. Oh, why did Love and Hip Hop even think this was a good scene? Because we know y'all set it up. We know y'all wrote the scene for him. For them. Y'all reaching. Now, I've never been with a man, but I know some shit. So, when Mama D said, get some lube, I thought she was, you know, talking about for her overbaked dry cookie. You know, Mama D a little up there in age, and I ain't saying everybody get, you know, dry down there when they get a little up there in age, but I'm just saying. But, honey, she fooled my motherfucking ass. Let me get my tea. Baby. When I say she wanted the lube to help Ernest, broken member, his broken man down there, um, get at attention. Attention! <laughs> Shout out to all uh, the soldiers and, you know, women and men serving for our country. Thank you. 
But she wanted him to get that attention, honey. And they needed lube to do it. But I guess they either used it all or uh, didn't use it enough and it ended up drying up. But the stuff had done ran out, y'all. Now, the problem is Mama D is paying all the bills. So if something doesn't go right, it's on her. Mama D ain't getting no dick or no money. <laughs> he keeps talking about his situation. What fucking situation? You got two jobs. Two. Uno, dos. You know how many people got one job and struggling? You got two jobs and can't help this woman with a water bill, a light bill, gas bill, gas in the car. Shit. A oil change. You can't help her with nothing. You can't even pay the motherfucking cable bill. And you talking about you living out of motherfucking suitcase. You gonna live out of that motherfucking suitcase for a motherfucking while. Cause ain't no way in on this side of the glory will you be standing up in my house talking about I got a situation. No, you got situations cause you got two jobs that I help you get boo. You gonna get it together. Now, are you done or are you finished? In my Birdman voice. Mm-hmm. Now, who the hell, and, and who the hell decorated uh, Mama D's room? Because it just looked it real, mm-mm, thrown together, thrown together. Very much so like it wasn't her room. Hey, Auntie Deb. Now, Deb is like that cool-ass auntie in the family. I love me some Auntie Deb. I'm glad Rashida put it out there that she ain't running no information back to nobody. That's how it's supposed to be. Um, uh, if it ain't life or death, you don't need to take it back, okay? And I really respect Rashida for that this time around because you we all know Rashida will get herself into some shit by taking some information back to the next motherfucker when she ain't even have to, okay? Jocelyn is lounging around, um, lounging about in her penthouse thinking about her video release party. She wants to know why Tommy, or shall I say that girl, tried to come at Dawn like that. Stevie said maybe Dawn did deserve a few lumps. You know, shit. Jocelyn said she's not wrong for telling those grown people that he and KK having sex. She says she don't want to talk about them bitches and she ain't giving no clarity to clarity to anybody. So, you know, I guess the Puerto Rican princess the Puerto Rican princess has spoken. Hmm. KK uh, KK says Scrap and their family are at her son Dollar's grave. She hasn't been there in seven years. Seven long years, y'all. And this is her son. Okay, now I, I think for a while I was thinking this was her nephew. This is her, actually her son. And she hasn't been to his grave since he was buried seven years ago. So you, you I mean, you got to imagine that. So when she walked up, she automatically broke down before she even made it all the way to the grave. I know it's painful for her. I always say no mother should have to bury their child. Rashida decides to put on a mother's, a mother's brunch. With Aunt Deb as the mediator, Rashida's mom, Rashida, Scrappy, Mama D, and Ernest. Why Ernest was there, I don't know. Um, I guess he said, I need some TV time shit. I need a, I need more of a check. Even though neither of the mothers wanted to be there with Mama D, ain't no talk uh, ain't no talking to her ass. She was dead wrong for going up in that stove. Ernest opens his mouth and tells it that Mama D has an alcohol problem. She's a drunk. She's addicted to alcohol. Um, so Mama D turns it back on him like, uh-uh, motherfucker, you need lubricant to get hard. Bitch, I fell out, y'all. I completely fell out, girl. I thought my wig shifted and everything. <laughs> I fell out. I, I said, no, Mama D, even though we seen the scene with them, I was not ready for that, y'all. <laughs> Deb completely was outdone. Scrappy is having a damn asthma attack over there. Deb said, Earth to Mars, uh, Rashida, I'm glad that you brought up the fact that um, Mama D is the reason why all uh, Scrappy's women get ran off because Bambi, you know, she went on a date with my nephew, Chaz. Now, in one scene, Deb is calling her, um, him her nephew, and another scene, she's calling him her son. You know, I know he's been in her life for over 10 years. That's Walker's best friend and everything like that, but you know... Nephew, son, which is it? Uh, Scrappy looked pissed like, oh yeah? Oh, I'm going to have a conversation with that motherfucker. Little slick ass. Came and got your dog, now you think you're free. Gave me back my little promise ring, now you think you're free. Oh, you ain't free around this bitch. 
Them couldn't do nothing but laugh at Mama D crazy ass. Okay. That was the end of that episode, y'all, um, of Love and Hip Hop Season 5 episode. What was that, 6? Did I say 6? I think it was 6, y'all. Let me just check and make sure. I'm going to give y'all the wrong information because I've been done said it quick. Like, all right, let's see. Yes, yeah, so that was Love and Hip Hop Atlanta Season 5 Episode 6, Mother of All Problems. All right. Um, I hope y'all enjoyed my little recap review with my little inputs in the, you know, we sipped a little bit of tea, you know, a little bit. You know, we sipped enough. It, it, it was here, and now it's here, halfway, okay? So, I guess I need to save this for Black Ink Crew, because I'm coming up with that next. And, yes, you can look out for it, because I'm really going to post it, and I'm really going to review, um, record it. Thank y'all for rocking with me. It is your girl, V. Like I said, I am, um, I am. Okay, yes, I am her V, or I am underscore V on Snapchat. Make sure y'all add me. And you know, if not, you can hit me up on Instagram, Author V Brown, A U T H O R V Brown. You know, I'm not doing the Facebook thing right now because I'm trying to get back into my writing. Y'all know I've been trying to do that for a minute, and I've been trying to figure out a way to adjust my time and then you know what I'm putting my time into and I just think Facebook it has been taking up a lot of my time so that's something that I can cut out. Um if y'all see Frida Gats aka Breezy till I say hey <laughs> I'm just playing but yeah till I say hey if you do and you know I will see y'all on the Black Ink Crew uh review because y'all already know that shit finna be popping Thank y'all for rocking with me. Make sure y'all subscribe, like, and share. Comment below. Let me know what you thought about this episode of Love and Hip Hop and Nana, even though ain't really too much go on. Hmm. But, um, yeah, definitely hit me up and let me know what your thoughts are. Give me a little recap of what you thinking. And make sure y'all remember, always sip tea and keep it sweet. Mm. Yes, God.